video, we're going to cover the anatomy of the male reproductive system, including the penis, testes, and accessory glands. We're going to break down the functions of each organ. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the anatomical organization of the male reproductive tract that I've drawn. What a masterpiece. And the male reproductive system can be split into different parts. And we're going to go through each of these parts, each of these organs. Now, the testes, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts, seminal vesicles, and bulbar urethral gland are paired structures. So on the left side here is the frontal view that shows the paired structures. But when I go through each organ, each part, I'll just be referring to one side of the body. And the urinary bladder and the ureter are not part of the reproductive tract but the reproductive and urinary tracts do merge when the ejaculatory ducts join the urethra in the prostate. Okay, so now let's subtract complexity by starting with the external organ of the male reproductive system, the penis. Now, what I've done here is I've colored in all the other parts gray besides the part we're going to be talking about. And on the top right hand corner, as you can see here, there's the frontal view and the organ colored in. Okay, and before we talk about the structure, let's label the other parts in this masterpiece first. So this right here is the pubic bone. This is the abdominal muscle, then the bladder and penis. Now the penis has two main functions. Number one, sexual intercourse. So when the individual is aroused, erection occurs. The erectile tissues are filled with blood. This is due to high parasympathetic activation or the relaxation of the smooth muscle cells. And there are three types of erection. So there's nocturnal that follows REM sleep or rapid eye movement periods, reflex from genital stimulation, or psychogenic. So visual stimulations, fantasy, smell, and... The second function is micturition or urination because the opening of the urethra is here. So the urethra carries urine from the bladder. And the structure of the penis can be divided into three parts. So there's the root, which is most proximal. You can't see it externally. The body, so the free part between the root and glands, which is composed of three cylindrical compartments, erectile tissue, the two compartments that run along the side of the penis are identical, and they are called corpora carbinosa. So those are the two compartments. They are identical that run along the side of the penis. And the third compartment is called the corpus spongiosum, and it's below the corpora carbinosa, and it surrounds the urethra and extends to form the tip of the penis. And the glands which contains the opening of the urethra. And this right here is the urethra. And we're going to cover this in more detail in the erection and ejaculation lecture. So that's the penis. The next part is the scrotum. So the scrotum is a fiber muscular sac. It contains the testes, epididymis, and the spermatic cord. These are paired structures that are divided internally into two sacs, so one for each testes. Now, during fetal development, early fetal development, the testes are actually located in the abdomen. But then later on, around seven months of gestation, they descend into the scrotum. The reason why they need to descend into the scrotum is for normal sperm production, because spermatogenesis requires a cooler temperature than normal internal body temperature, approximately 2 degrees lower. So cooling occurs because of the air circulating around the scrotum and the blood vessels supplying the testes that have a heat exchange mechanism. And there's also a smooth muscle underneath the skin called the dartos muscle, which wrinkles the skin to reduce heat loss, so it decreases surface area. And there's also the cremaster muscle that contract and pull the testes upwards towards the body when it's cold so it can maintain temperature. Now let's talk about the testes and epididymis. So they are paired structures in the scrotum. The testes are the site of spermatogenesis, sperm production, and also hormone synthesis. And the epididymis are located at the head of each testes. They are loosely attached 
outside of the testes and it's a storage reservoir for sperm. So let's zoom in on this structure and take a look at it closer. So the testes consists of seminiferous tubules, which are a series of convoluted tubules and are supported by interstitial tissue. So spermatogenesis occurs in the seminiferous tubules. And we'll talk about the structure of the seminiferous tubules in the spermatogenesis lecture and how these tubules are divided. So for now, let's just go over the basics. Now, the seminiferous tubules form the reti testes, a network of interconnected tubes, and the developing sperm will travel from the seminiferous tubules into the reti testes. And from the reti testes to the efferent tubules, which are ducts that will transport the sperm from the reti testes to the epididymis. And in the epididymis, this is where the sperm will be stored and mature. So a storage reservoir for sperm. And we can divide the epididymis into three parts. So the head, this is formed by efferent tubules and they transport sperm from the testes to the epididymis, the body, and then the tail, which is a distal part. And this leads to the vas deferens. But before we talk about the vas deferens and move on to the vas deferens, let's quickly talk about the spermatic cord, okay? Now, I don't have the spermatic cord drawn on this masterpiece, but the vas deferens, blood vessels and nerves supplying the testes are bound together in the spermatic cord. So the spermatic cord is just a collection of ducts, vessels, and nerves that run to and from the testes. They are surrounded by fascia, which is why it's got that cord-like structure, the spermatic cord. Okay, so there's blood vessels, testicular artery, artery to the vas deferens, nerves, and of course the vas deferens, so the ducts that transports sperm to the ejaculatory duct. Okay, so now moving on to the vas deferens, let's zoom out of this view again and go back to our anatomical drawing. The vas deferens is a thick muscular tube that transports sperm from the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct is the convergence of the vas deferens and seminal vesicle. So the vas deferens is part of the spermatic cord and travels through the inguinal canal entering the abdomen and it's going to continue behind the urinary bladder. But what I've shown here is it's in front so that we can follow it through. But it's going to continue behind the urinary bladder. And the seminal vesicles are behind the bladder. And they join the two vas deferens or vasa deferentia, one from each testes, to form the two ejaculatory ducts. So the ejaculatory duct is this here, okay? The next part is the seminal vesicle or the seminal vesicles because they are a pair of glands which secrete fluids as part of semen. So semen is made up of sperm and fluids. These fluids are alkaline to neutralize the acidity of the male urethra and the acidity of the vagina. It contains fructose because the sperm needs energy for its travels, safe travels, boys. It contains prostaglandins. This is to suppress the female immune response to semen that is foreign and also clotting factors to help the semen in the female reproductive tract. Now from the ejaculatory ducts, it enters the prostate gland and joins the urethra and the urethra is coming from the bladder. So the prostate is a single structure and it's the size of a walnut, a walnut size. It's located below the bladder. The urethra then emerges from the prostate gland and enters the penis. And the prostate gland also secretes fluid. It secretes enzymes, and this is to allow semen to remain in a fluid state. And below the prostate gland here are the P-shaped paired glands called bulbar urethral glands, which drains into the urethra after the prostate. And these glands also contribute to semen. They produce lubricating mucus. This is to help neutralize the acidity in the male urethra and also help prepare a lubricated pathway for ejaculation. So these glands secrete fluids that includes nutrients, chemicals to help sperm survival and increase sperm motility, and also buffers to neutralize the acidic environment. So that is the anatomy of the male reproductive tract. In this lecture, we learned that the male reproductive tract can be divided into different parts. The penis, the scrotum, testes and epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts, seminal vesicle, 
prostate, and bulbar urethral glands, and we talked about their function. We also learned that the reproductive and urinary tracts do merge when the ejaculatory ducts joins the urethra in the prostate. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating!